So you're finished with your beginner's tutorial with RPG Maker. And you're finally ready to start importing your own sprites, your own characters into RPG Maker to make your game. Except when you do, well, it doesn't exactly work out, right? What's up, dogs? Name's Diodi, and I'm here to help you guys out with that. We're going to go about the technical side of importing your sprites into RPG Maker and not the pixel artwork that's involved with creating them. So if we hop into an event and we actually click into the image, you're going to notice some pretty varying things about what's known as the character sheet. This whole entire image is known as the character sheet and yes, they can hold several different characters per sheet or they can also just hold a single character per sheet. And you'll notice that I have all of this white space and you can probably imagine, do you need to have all of this white space for your character? And the answer to that is no, because if we go down to something, say Big Monster 1, you can clearly see that it does not have all that giant white space just to hold one character. Before we dive too deep, the first thing you guys gotta know is that each square is 48 by 48 pixel. And of course you can change it, but you do require a plugin in order to do so. Now I'm going to hit run just to show you something else. With this character, you can imagine that he's probably two tiles high by two tiles wide. But if you measure up the top of his horn to the sand tile, you're gonna notice that it's ever so slightly above. But at the same time, if you measure his the very bottom of the tail to the very bottom of this sand tile, it's also ever so slightly above. So this means to say that it actually moves the character up ever so slightly. If you go into the help, into contents, this window will pop up. If you just go ahead and type in character, what you're actually looking for is asset standards. And we can actually see that the asset standards for our character images is all explained through here. And also in this image asset, if you're curious about the battle backs, front view enemies, face, parallax, well, they give you all of those pixel dimensions as well. And it's very helpful to use. And it also tells you what these prefixes mean, as well as for the character sheets. So just by reading the help, it mentions that the normal size for each tile or for each character is 48 by 48, consists of our four directions and three patterns for a total of 12 patterns. Your max file size for one character sheet is two rows by four columns, totaling eight images. Two rows, four columns, total of eight images and 12 patterns and that the size of the character will be calculated using 1 12th of the width and 1 8th of the height of this file. Moreover, characters will be shown 6 pixels above a tile so they appear more natural when on top of buildings. So that's exactly why the image moves ever so slightly up. And that it is possible to treat one character as one file by including the money sign at the beginning of the file name using an exclamation mark will prevent it from shifting 6 pixels up and the brush elements will no longer make it appear half transparent. So what that last part means is that if I drag him over to that grass there, just make sure to look at his feet. You'll see that it is in fact slightly transparent because of the grass. And that bush effect is in your database. Go into tile set, it was outside in B, and it is exactly this one. And if I go to bush, you're gonna see those cool squiggly lines to show that it is a bush and we'll use that effect. So as it suggested, if we use instead a treasure chest or anything else with the exclamation mark that we see here, I'll just use a chest. We're going to see that that transparency does not work. And there you have it. Transparency does not work. And at the same time, it does not move six pixels up. So there you have it. The very bottom of the crate matches up with the very bottom of the tile. So let's say you want to generate some pixel art. How exactly do you have to define your file so you can have it be the RPG Maker standard? Well, we're going to need to go into a third party application. For this tutorial, what I'm going to show you is through the use of GIMP. And the reason being is because GIMP is your quote unquote free version of Photoshop. 
and a lot of people probably opt to use this before purchasing a much more efficient application. So recall that each tile is 48 by 48. So what we want to do is that when we create a new canvas, we do want to make sure that it is a multiple of 48 by 48. So across it's three tiles and to showcase facing down left right and up it's four tiles and there you guys have it and I'm just going to turn the background white so it's easier for us to see I'm going to go into view show grid image configure grid and make it 48 by 48 so now I have the real estate to create some images and just so that we have an example, I'm gonna go ahead and make one real quick. Okay, really quickly, I kinda just made a stick figure and he's kinda doing the wave. I thought it was kinda funny, but anyways. So now that I've created my guy, I do wanna save him into RPG Maker. And you're probably gonna notice that these two sides are blank. And yes, I am leaving them blank because those are what the stepping animation are. But of course, for the extent of this video's tutorial, I don't need to make those. So to export it, I am just going to export as, and I'll call this tutorial stick guy, export. Make sure it is a .png. Confirm the export. And then to upload it into RPG Maker, you could do one of two things. If you were to go into your resource manager and do characters, you can import it this way. But I'm a person who likes to get very, very manual into the folders. So I just go to game, open folders, into image, characters, and then I just drag and drop it over here. Drag and drop. And there we go. So notice that he does not have any prefixes to him. And I'm going to show you something that you guys probably ran into. Where's my tutorial stick guy? So there you have it. It's all weird. And the reason for that is because of what we saw in the help. 1 12th width and 1 8th height. So accordingly, if we were to count this out, we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 2, 4, 6, and 8. So that's exactly what that means. But also from the help file, if we use a money sign, it would then treat it as one character sheet. Or one character so I'm gonna close this and going back into the folder and then add a money sign in front of them so now I'm gonna go back into this image and look for my money sign tutorial stick guy and BAM there we have it it automatically adjusted for one character what up stick guy what up <laughs> so now I'm just gonna create a copy of that image and instead add the exclamation point and the exclamation point does take priority so it will be in front of the money sign and I'm gonna just take this guy copy paste them to the right and then go to look for um money sign I mean exclamation the money sign tutorial guy bada boom there you guys see the difference now let's assume you want to make characters that's larger than 48 by 48 or two tiles high by one tile wide and we can do that if we take our canvas in here I'll even go with a new canvas just so you can see how that works and remember it's 48 by 48 so we always want to work with multiples of 48 so let's say we want our character to be two tiles high but one tile wide so we'll keep it like this and now we punch in that pattern that we learned about so it needs to be three tiles wide and four tiles high boom here we have our new canvas so i'm just going to go ahead and grab the character that i created copy and paste them in create a new and i'm going to turn off this background so i can actually see my guy i'm going to expand it zoom in and i am going to go into view show grid image configure grid so you could do 48 by 48 if you're okay with this. But if you're not, then just remove the chain link. And we know that our guy is too high. So vertical, 
Uh, unfortunately, we can't do math, so we're going to have to do it in our brains. I know that's 96, and then hit OK. So now I just got to re-edit this so that he fits the canvas. Boom. And then let's import this, export I mean. Tutorial Stick Man 2. Export. And I'm going to drag and drop them into the characters folder. And I just realized I forgot my prefixes. So I'm going to add the exclamation and the money sign. Actually, I'm just going to keep the money sign. I don't want him to be exclaiming. Where is he? Right here. So I'm going to remove that exclamation because he's not an object. He's stick man. No, actually, he's stick guy. Stick guy. Go back into RPG Maker. I'm going to go grab this guy, copy, paste, and let's go look for tutorial stick guy 2. Here he is, and you can see that he is squared off perfectly, thanks to that money sign that we put there. And I'm going to move this guy over and move him to the right of the center one, because remember, this center one is money sign, no exclamation. This way we got a more direct comparison. And boom, you'll see that he actually looks exactly the same as the other one. So if this is to tell you anything, it's that the very bottom of this image that's being selected will line up with the very bottom of the tiles in RPG Maker. And of course, it will adjust by 6 pixels if it needs to, as depending on whether or not you have the exclamation mark. So you can imagine that with a 2x2 two two image like this guy here, Even though the center line is the border between the 48 by 48 on this side and the 48 by 48 on this side, he will still be centered in the middle because that's how we portrayed him in the image. So there you guys have it. I hope you guys learned a lot from today's video. And if you did, please hit the like button. I would appreciate it so very much. And if you're also interested, subscribe for more. I have a website full of different tutorials from beginners to intermediate to expert. So do check it out in the descriptions down below. Or you can mess around on my YouTube to see all the other stuff I created as well. If you're interested in seeing what I'm creating, my game is called Caster's Trap and I actually have a devlog right here. Nailed it. <laughs> for those new, I've been trying to get the right corner for the longest time and I think I finally got it. Alright, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, let's